Hello there World of Tankers, I'm Drudels Blitz, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Tier 10 British Collector Heavy Tank, the Super Conqueror. Now this is a vehicle I've been waiting a long time to come into the game, and I'm guessing all of you guys have been waiting so long as well. And now that it's finally here, I'm really kind of disappointed in the tank. So I'm going to be letting you guys know why in this video, I'm going to be showing you the armor profile, how it plays, and everything else like that, and how it stacks up to the Chieftain Mark VI, the other Tier 10 British Heavy that is currently in the store for a much cheaper price tag than you'll probably be, be picking up the Super Conqueror for. Now I will say right off the bat, if you have $10 sparing and you want to try and get the $10 bundle that gives you three containers, it's definitely worth it in my opinion just to try and get it because the Super Conqueror is a very fun tank. It just didn't live up to the expectations I had for it but overall it is a good tank and for three crates ten bucks you're at least going to get your gold's value back in what you've spent but these containers down here oh my god they are expensive it's going to cost you at least 250 dollars to get this tank guaranteed in your garage and in my opinion yeah that's not worth it 250 dollars i spent 120 bucks and that's the max i was going to spend today because i'm like you know what if i don't get it that's okay i've got my contributor account here and i can still play it for you guys tell you my opinion on it and i'm actually glad that I didn't spend any more because you're gonna see here how the tank plays the armor profile and everything else like that so as I said I think it's a balanced tank it's actually a very solid vehicle but there's a couple issues I have with the tank which I'll be showing you in armor inspector after I am finished with this game so let me talk a little bit about the statistics as we do drive into our position in this game what's good about it and what's bad so it's got about the same gun as the FV 2 and 5b it looks the same and that's because it practically is the same except it's not it's like grabbing the FV 2 and 5p gun and then nerfing it in almost every imaginable way. It has 2650 damage per minute with calibrated on, which is what I'd suggest to run it with if you do own it. And you can also run gun rammer that has 2800 damage per minute. So it's got about 250 less DPM than the FV2 and 5b. Then it's got terrible on movement dispersion values. You can see like when aiming far away, that dispersion is quite poor, especially because we're only going 30 right now, which the tank goes 35. Doesn't have the best power to weight ratio. And as well, the aiming time is a little longer and dispersion just overall is worse on the tank. So the gun is a, t a tuned down FV2 and 5B, which makes sense, you know. It's got a much better armor profile, which again makes sense. It's meant to be a more frontline aggressive heavy tank, which is what I agree. It should be a frontline heavy, but at the same time, it also falls apart very, very aggressively. You'd think, oh, that turret is virtually impossible to penetrate because it's got that spaced armor on the front of it, and it's got that just really steep slope. It's sort of like an FV2 and 5B, but it isn't. You'll see. I'll show you an armor inspector what the biggest issue I have with this tank, which actually kind of annoyed me when I I was playing this tank literally one game before this and I was testing it is when I found out the issue with the vehicle. So we've got that object 268 right there. Let's see if we can get a nice shell. There we go. The aiming time is bad, but it's it's not terrible. You know, you can still get your shells in if you just aim in a little bit longer than normal. I don't really mind it that much there. There we go. Nice tap right into the turret of that T-54. Let's, uh, let's actually just get a nice hesh maybe into this 54 as well if we can. Um, or not, or we won't at all. I want to get a nice hash into that 54. There we go, 543, I'll take that. We got an invisible shell that hit us there, and that actually hit us right in the upper hall. That kind of sucks, and there we go. We got the object 268 pending us, and that was also right in the upper hall. And that's because this tank does not have the strongest upper plate. It's good, but uh, it's definitely not as strong as I thought it would be. It's decent. There you go, you can see the gun not really being as accurate as I wished it would. So that's one issue with the vehicle. We've got that uh, Object 268 right here, who we're going to snap a nasty little shell into at least. I will push very aggressive on this 268 because, you know, it's a 268. I can easily rip it apart. We've got that E100. Again, look at that aiming time. It's just so long to get out one simple shell. It is really a pain sometimes waiting and waiting for your shells to aim in. I really don't like that. I'm not a huge fan of how long that aiming time is. And there you go, another bounce just because of that gun. It's really not spectacular on the aiming time. But again, it is a frontline heavy, so that's to be expected. Now we have this M103 here. Let's uh, try and tap a shell. There we go. Nice shell right into the roof of the M103. Not sure what that player was expecting, but uh, definitely did not go to the uh, the level of what it was probably going for there. E100 changing positions. Come on, E100, back up. You know you want to play with this gun here. Maybe not, you don't. Uh, uh, we can't get that shell and just not able to. Okay, so you know what? We'll push in here. That 268 is not going to be dealing with us anymore, which is nice. So Ooh, you know what? We do got the Yag Tiger. We've got the sides. Let's get a nice Hesh in there. Again, the Hesh, I love. Being able to get out that much damage with Hesh is just wonderful, especially on the side of a literal heavily armored uh, tank destroyer. It's nice. It's really, really nice. But again, armor profile does feel a little bit lackluster for it being the Super Conqueror. It falls apart very quickly on the sides. 
There we go, another nice tap. But it really isn't as strong as you'd expect it to be. But we are getting at the damage. You know, I'm very happy with that. Again, that reload is just so long for what you'd expect. So um, I think we might actually be able to out-reload our teammates here and get this final shell in. So let's do that. Let's load in a premium shell, make sure it pens. Oof, you know what? That E3, E4 just took that shell. So I guess we're not going to be getting that one in. But we still got the uh, E100 over here. So let's get a nice final tap into the E100. Oh, didn't mean to shoot premium, but you know what? I'll still take the damage. 4,300 in the first game is definitely a solid amount, but I didn't really get to show it as a frontline tank. We didn't really bounce that many shells. In fact, the shells that we received didn't bounce us at all that I'm aware of. Yeah, we received four shells, and every single shell that hit us penetrated, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, I think one of them hit the track, actually, but other than that, all of them penetrated. The 268 easily through the upper plate. Now, the upper plate on this tank is very strong. I think it's about 300 millimeters, but it's definitely nothing to brag about. Actually, I'll pull up the armor profile now. I actually almost forgot to do that. And by the way, if you like this type of content, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It really does help out the channel. But here we go. We've got the armor profile up, so now I can show you it. So upper plate is thick, but 295 yeah, that means that pretty much any tier 10 tank destroyers can easily overmatch your upper plate. So keep that in mind. Object 268, anything like that on flat terrain will easily be overmatching your superstructure as well. While heat rounds will not be penning it because, of course, heat rounds do not have the... Uh, this is reactive armor, which means heat rounds can't pen it. Premium rounds with 8 PCR, like the Super Conqueror has here, aiming at a Super Conqueror, you can easily pen the upper plate. So that is one thing that the Super Conqueror does not do well against is 8 PCR rounds. Any tanks that fire premium 8 PCR, keep an eye on. But the biggest issue I have with this tank is look at the gun. Now, right on the literal gun mantlet, you literally shoot at the gun, you hit the edge of it, that's 197 millimeters thick. Now, that means that literal tier 9 tanks with almost stock guns can penetrate through the gun of the tank. That is ridiculous. And then you load the premium and you can penetrate all around the turret. Literal, the gun mantlet, you can hit next to the gun mantlet, the cheeks, you can hit lower than it, you can hit above it as well. And it's pretty easy to penetrate it. And that is the issue I have with the Super Conqueror, is that you can very easily penetrate the tank's turret I didn't realize this until I was up against a Super Conqueror, and it was just shooting at me right at the gun. I was like, how is it penetrating me? And I saw a shell literally penetrate right where you can see that marker is hitting right there. It is ridiculous. As well, you do have these weak little uh, spots on the side here. That's only 185 millimeters thick there. If you over angle the tank, very easy to pen that. As well, you can hit this little corner here while the lower part is very hard to pen. Upper part, yeah, very easy. And the lower plate, it's pretty easy to pen as well. 139, yeah. That means Hess shells, ooh, they're gonna really, really like penning your tank. So let's get back to World of Tanks here, and uh, let's hopefully see if it's working. Yes, it is. Thank you, OBS. So, frontally, it's got decent armor, but that gun mantlet is a little trick that I'm pretty sure not a lot of you know about, but now you do, and that's how you take out a Super Conqueror. Fun fact, literally shoot at its gun mantlet, and you'll go right through. Something that's kind of stupid, if you ask me, but yeah, I think Wargaming needs to fix that. I'm not sure if they know about that, but that's why I think the tank isn't worth it. Just that one simple thing, the turret armor ruins it. It's supposed to have one of the strongest turrets in the game, and it doesn't really work. And as well, the upper plate is strong, but again, most tank destroyers easily punch through it. Now, of course, it does have 10 degrees of gun depression. Using your gun depression, it's virtually impossible to penetrate the upper plate, as long as you're hiding that lower plate. But again, that mantlet is still 200 millimeters thick. Just shoot the mantlet. So that is the biggest issue I have with the Super Conqueror, is how easy it is to penetrate through the turret. And like, it's not a hard target to hit either. Literally, just aim at the gun. It's very easy. In fact, it's pretty easy to shoot the gun in general. So we're actually, well, we're not up against. Oh, wait, no, they do have a Super Conqueror. There we go. So let me see if we can pen it. Yes, it is a worse 2 and 5B in my opinion. I am not the biggest fan of the 2 and 5B, but the 2 and 5B has the gun. And in fact, the 2 and 5B has the armor profile on the turret where this tank doesn't. I think it's decent. The tank is balanced, but the turret should be impossible to penetrate, at least frontally, other than the cupola, in my personal opinion. So here we go. I'm going to be pushing into the most effective position on this map. This is Hellas. I was about to say Alpenstadt, but this is not Alpenstadt. So this spot here is very effective because, of course, I'm using my gun depression and I can easily rip apart opponents because until this video is posted, they probably don't know where to penetrate the tank. So here we go. We've got the Super Conqueror right there. And uh, yeah, I actually don't have enough gun depression to shoot that guy and I used the wrong repair kit. The only reason I don't is because this IS-7 is taking up the spot I want. It's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually taking the position I need. So here we go. Now we might actually be able to get into that position. Nice premium shell right into the Jagdpanzer. Ooh, no. This IS-7 made a grave mistake pushing out that far. Not sure why that guy did it, but yeah. Blew his armor profile completely. I meant to fire a high explosive shell there, but I accidentally landed myself a premium shell. 
So here we go. I am now stuck alone against the Super Conqueror. Again, it doesn't really have the thickest side armor, and that guy shot a premium round right through the frontal armor on the tank. So it's thick, but it's not that thick. That's the issue I have with the vehicle. And um, let's see. No. All right. So we can't hit that. That's actually a bit of an issue right now because uh, I can't hit that enemy Super Conqueror, and it can hit me. But it looks like it's repositioning, which is good. I want it to reposition. That way we can get into a stronger frontal position. Um, yeah, I'm going to be pushing up here, actually. Let's see if we can get that 4,005. Yes, 4,005 taken out of the game. That's good. So I've got to be a lot more careful, though, as I said, for that gun mantlet. And the 2 and 5B doesn't have that weak spot. So here we go. Nice tap into the 2 and 5B. Now, if this player rushes me, it could actually easily rip me right out of the battle. But uh, at the same time, I'm not super worried because um, we've got our Hesh, actually. Oh, no, I hit his gun. That's not good. And let's see how the armor profile does work here. Let's see. Let's see if that turret works. Um, I'm gonna try and actually over-angle that turn armor, but again, just right through, oh no, never mind, I take it back, that was a high explosive shell. This player obviously does not know how to take it out, so I'm gonna try and angle it so that the guy can't hit my turret, but there you go, right through the turn armor, it's the biggest issue with the tank, it literally just right through the mantlet, so I'm actually gonna try and angle it like this, and yeah, just pens, so literally the turn on this tank is super weak, and it's something that I don't like, it's not how you'd expect it to be. Literally right through. It is the turret. There you go. The guy agrees. It's the middle. The turret sucks on the vehicle, and it's absolutely why I hate it. It is not worth it just because of that turret armor. I would 100% suggest if you were thinking, hey, maybe I'll drop 50 bucks and try and pick up the vehicle. Here's what I suggest to do. Go in the store, go to bundles, and go pick up yourself, uh, not bundles, offers. Pick up yourself a Chieftain Mark VI. It comes with the camouflage, fully equipped, 25 boosters, and only 20,000 gold. And in fact, you can get the the container for the Mark VI, which gives you its weight in gold for 25 bucks, 25% drop chance, and uh, it's way better, in my opinion, than the... Uh, the Super Conqueror. So I'm disappointed in the vehicle. It doesn't do what I expected it to do. In that position, we should be virtually impossible to penetrate. That FV2 and 5B should not have been able to pen us in the turret. Not only was it able to pen us in the turret frontally right in the gun mantlet, as you saw, I also turned it to the side to try and show you that also went right through. It wasn't me playing the tank wrong there. It was just you can't do anything. So that's my opinion. The tank definitely needs a buff. Let me know in the comments down below on the turret armor, but yeah, it's definitely not as strong as it should be. Still got a decent damage out, but yeah, this is not the Super Conqueror. This is more like the Pooper Conqueror. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. But other than that, I hope you're all doing well out there. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure to subscribe if you did, but I'll see you in the next one.